Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady. And today we have two new stories. The first about the military man who forgot that people should be treated with respect. And the second about the Karen who pretended to be the owner's best friend. I don't work here, Sergeant Major. So as a few of you may remember from my post last night, I have PTSD. And like many soldiers, it took me a long time to admit it to myself and longer to admit it to others. Before I really knew much about it or even thought that I had it, I still knew something was wrong with me. And also, like many soldiers, I started to self-medicate. At first, it was just alcohol, which turned into more alcohol, which turned into Adderall, which turned into Coke, ecstasy, and basically anything else I could get my hands on. Now, I tried not to let it affect my work, but that's pretty hard to do in the military, and eventually this all led to a nervous breakdown that led to me getting caught, losing my E5 rank, and eventually admitting to my leadership what was going on, and I asked for help. Luckily, my leadership liked me and cared about me and allowed me to go to the military version of Alcoholics slash Narcotics Anonymous on the stipulation that I made regular visits with mental health as well. Now then, while my immediate leadership cared a lot more about me than I deserved, these events made my battalion sergeant major, my boss's 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 boss in civilian speak, absolutely hate me. He already had an issue with me before because of a joke I'd made when first meeting. He was from an engineer unit that had been doing some kind of mining work before being transferred, so I asked if that wouldn't make him a sergeant minor instead of a sergeant major. A joke I still stand by. Normally this wouldn't really be a big issue as lower enlisted wouldn't have much interaction with someone of his rank, but I was a bit of a special case. I never came down on PCS, permanent change of station orders, so I spent all eight years of service in the hellhole that is Fort Stewart, Georgia. Being such a seemingly permanent fixture in my unit, it wasn't unusual for me to be tasked to give the new NCOs of my company tours of the base and the battalion brigade areas. For the three ID soldiers in the audience, we were at the then new brigade area off main post, out the back gate on the way to Savannah, as well as introduce them to the S-Shop personnel, offices that run the day-to-day -day paperwork and stuff that keep the Army organized and running. As I knew most people there and on base, hell, for a little while I'd even dated a family friend of a brigade commander and sat in on a few poker games with them, the base commander and the higher-ups, this led to me interacting with the sergeant major more than I should have since I was in the battalion area more than I normally would have been and also led to more dislike from him since he perceived me as having more influence than I should have. I didn't really have much or any influence, but from time to time when meeting and passing, the brigade commander would say hi to me so the sergeant major knew I had played a few games with the big boys on base. Okay, longest backstory ever. Now, on to the event. So it was my last day in the unit. I had just gotten my elusive and highly sought after bulldog stamp which is what the base personnel office uses to signify that you've completed all paperwork and are released from the post, as well as my DD-214, which states I'm no longer in the military. I wasn't quite done at the post, though, as a lot of the guys in my company were throwing a going-away party for me. Just about everyone in my company was there, except for my best friend, who we'll call N, who was stuck on staff duty, a 24-hour shift where you basically just answer phone calls from angry wives that their husbands are working so much and breaking up drunken fights and unlocking barracks doors for soldiers that lock themselves out. Now, Ann and I had gone to basic training together, and we were lucky enough to be stationed at the same unit together, and he'd been there as long as myself. We spent damn near every second together for eight years at this point. We'd been through three deployments, multiple firefights. He was there when my ex fiance left me and was the guy who very literally drug me out of bed and dressed me and forced me to go out when my depression got so bad I couldn't make myself get out of bed. He was the best friend I've ever and will ever have, so I'm sure as hell not leaving without saying goodbye to him. Since he couldn't be there, we had plans the next day together, and I was just crashing in his place that night. Anyway, the party came and went, we laughed and cried, and admittedly got way too drunk, and after it was over, drunk me walked to the battalion area to get N's key card. This was maybe 11 o'clock or midnight, so I didn't worry about running into anybody. Plus, I was in civilian, so I wasn't worried about someone there thinking I was on duty or anything. So I walk in, and of course, true to my luck, it was the Sergeant Major, SGM from here out. 
talking to the staff duty NCO. I was drunk, clumsy, and loud, so he noticed me straight away. SGM, scratch that, Sergeant. Looks like Loken here has shown up to volunteer to buff the floors. They better shine by the time I see you at PT. Me, drunk, happy, and not wanting to end the drama. Roger that, SGM. He walks off to do whatever, and both N and his NCO laugh, knowing I'll be long gone by PT, and the only part I'd take in buffing the floors was to possibly stand on the buffer while N works it. This helps scratch the wax off before adding a new coat. It's also fun as hell when you're drunk. After a bit of chat, I grab the key card from N and turn around to leave and damn near plow right into the SGM. I told you to start on the floors 30 minutes ago. What the F have you been doing? Sorry, SGM. I'll get right on that. Nope, you had your chance. More than enough since you've been here. You're getting another Article 15, and I'll have you out of the Army by the end of the year. Obviously, he yelled this, as that's the only way he knew how to speak, so everyone heard him. An important part I forgot to mention was that I had gone straight from the base offices to the party, so I still had my paperwork with me. With a huge, drunken smile, I hold up my DD-214 in his face and yell, though admittedly not as loud, say, The F you will, SGM! I'm a civvy now, so you can suck my bleep! and I calmly walk past him and out the doors as he's literally frozen in shock, as it's likely been two or three decades since somebody had disrespected him like that, in public anyway. Admittedly, the walk was all show, and as soon as I was out of sight, I ran faster than I probably had on any PT test and didn't stop until I was inside N's room. Yes, I was younger and in better shape than the SGM, but I had no delusions that I could take him. He'd been in the Army since he was 18, back at a time when soldiers were trained to be a different kind of soldier than they are today. And I doubt I would have survived the confrontation without needing surgery. And even if I did somehow win, I doubt the MPs would be kind to someone who assaulted a sergeant major. So that's the story. I hope you all enjoyed it. And our next story. I am a personal friend of the owner. Who do you answer to? So disclaimer, this is one I witnessed, not one that directly happened to me. So when I was young, my mother worked for a car dealership owned by this really nice older guy. Like this guy was really well off, very well spoken, not what an American would think of as a posh American accent, not that extreme, but if you're English, you've probably got a good idea. He owned the dealership, the building, the land, and at least half a dozen other businesses in the area, and most of the land and commercial properties in the town. But for all that, he was also the kind of guy who would hear that his staff's 14-year-old child was getting a hamster and go, my daughter used to have a hamster. And three days later, he just gave my mom like 400 pounds worth of Rotostack hamster stuff. Every year, he'd do up the whole showroom for Christmas, dress up as Santa, and give out presents to the kids in the area, etc. Anyway, the reason I remember this was because it was the day my mom took me over to her work so I could say thank you for all the hamster stuff. So we got there, and we were waiting for him to be free. I was talking to the people at the desk because I knew all of them when suddenly we hear this woman's raised voice. Looked over to see this old woman, at least old to a 14-year-old, she may have been, I don't know, somewhere between 40 and 60, with the owner. And she was absolutely laying into him because they couldn't do whatever it was she wanted. Now, everyone working there always wore a red jumper, but not a name badge because everyone's desk had a nameplate. By chance, I was wearing a reddish jumper, not the same red, not even a particularly similar red that day, the woman comes up to me. I can only assume she must have been short-sighted or something because my 14-year-old face did not look anywhere near working age. I could more easily have passed for a 10-year-old than a 16 or 17-year-old, and my entire work experience at that point was helping to put magazines in envelopes to post for like three pounds per 250. Okay, I need to book my car in and loan a car. Me, oh, the service desk is over there. No, I didn't sound like an adult either. No, go get it sorted. I need to be gone in 10 minutes. I'm sorry, I don't work here. I don't even... At that point, she cut me off and went off. I don't have time for your excuses. I need to be gone in 10 minutes. Now give me that loaner car, you stupid child. A moment later, a hand comes down on my shoulder. I look up, and who is it? Yep, it's the owner. He says, I'll handle this, AXW. How can I help you, madam? I backed off to the service desk and watched. The service guys were already giving WTF looks to each other, 
but the woman just got louder and shriller. I am a close personal friend of John Jeffries, the owner. Now I need my service in a loaner car. Do you have a booking? I don't need a booking. I'm a friend of the owner. Unfortunately, ma'am, the workshop is fully booked today, but we can book you in for a later date. You'll do it today. That's it. Who do you answer to? At this point, everyone in the room and some back office staff were looking at her. This is where the owner gave an answer that I will never forget because it was so calm and so quiet. Madam, I answer to no one but God. What? That's it. What's your name? You and that disrespectful child are gone. John Jeffries, the owner. And to the best of my knowledge, we've never met. Also, that child is literally a child, not an employee. She kind of froze, then he gestured to the organizational chart, the thing they used to have on the wall with his face right at the top of it, right above the word owner. She left and earned the ignoble quality of being one of only two customers who we ever wrote to saying, you are no longer welcome in our business in over 35 years of owning the company. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end and I'll see you in the next one.